Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. About four months ago now, I've uh, gotten access to a lot of the new LED light strips that have become available. Uh, this is all thanks to uh, Sam over at Ottawa LED, so uh, check him out. Uh, initially, what my intention was, it was just to avoid um, the problems I was having with uh, blown power supplies on a lot of the commercially available LED uh, fixtures that I was picking up. And what I did then was just uh, built my own, and you can check out the videos if you like for that. But what I want to do now is I want to check these uh, strips out to see how uh, various things grow under them. So I've set up two experiments. Uh, this one's going to be for coral, and I've also running concurrently one for uh, freshwater. That will be up soon, hopefully. What I want to do is see if the corals will actually grow with uh, these styles of lights. And what I'm going to do is initially I'm going to set up uh, three UVs. You can see them here in the still shot up on top. And then you see there's two uh, empty holes there. They're going to be able to add uh, 10Ks as the experiment goes along. And I want to see uh, if I can get the same kind of uh, coral growth and uh, fluorescence that I've been used to with uh, commercial available fixtures. Uh, this video, though, is going to be different than what you may be used to from uh, other videos you've seen or other uh, <laughs> websites. I'm not going to get into uh, lux and par and per and lumens and all the technical jargon. I might do a little bit of that for the plant uh, side of things of the freshwater. Uh, for this, what I want to do is I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it all up with a split screen, at least initially when the corals are smaller. Uh, so you can just look at it and make your own judgments as to what looks best for you. And from there, you can decide whether or not these are any good at all. So what I'm going to do here initially is, like I said, set up three UVs. Uh, and then we're going to see how the coral uh, responds to that. This initial shot is, uh, well, the same piece of coral. This is a uh, frog spawn coral. And on the left, it's with actinic. Uh, that's uh, two four foot um, T5 high output tubes. And on the right is the three uh, UV strips that uh, you saw me with, um, when I was doing the initial build there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to uh, video <laughs> so you can actually see these things move. And I'm going to keep the, uh, the actinic one on the left, and then as the weeks go by, you can see how uh, the coral is responding to just having pure UV, um, no uh, additional light whatsoever except, well, ambient room light. Now, I said I wasn't going to get into Lux at all, but I did buy a cheap little Lux meter, so I'm going to use that just to give you a rough comparison of the actual visual light that's available. Again, I'll get into all that technical crap and the uh, plant side of things. Uh, hopefully not too much to bore you, but uh, all right, let's get on with this. Now this is at a hundred lux, which is basically dark, <laughs> for well from a human perspective anyway. But you can see they're fluorescing quite nicely. And what we're going to do here is uh, keep the initial left hand shot, and we're going to see how the coral responds to just having pure UV, and uh, as the weeks go by. So we're up here to uh, week two now. Uh, there's no real shrinkage or anything. Uh, it seems to be doing quite well. And then what we're going to do is switch over to, uh, unfortunately, erased week three. Uh, and we're on to week four. Uh, it's actually, that's a month of pretty much being in the dark. And it's uh, not growing, but it's not shrinking or anything. And uh, this shot here is a comparison from week one to uh, week four. And uh, I think it's doing really quite well. But like I said, judge for yourself. And now it's time to add the first of the 10K strips. Uh, this is going to be on for uh, four hours uh, a day, in the middle of the day. Uh, the UV has been on since seven, uh, from 7 in the morning till 10 at night, every day. And I'm going to do is start off with a low amount of light, like I said initially, and see how it goes. And then uh, what I'm going to do is move on, uh, adding more light as uh, time goes on. It's very easy to switch these out with uh, this style of bracket, just a couple bolts. All right, this is the initial picture. Unfortunately, because uh, with the light now, it's uh, <laughs> getting too large to do the split screen. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to toggle back and forth between the original shot and as the weeks go by. This is, again, like the original, and then you can see it's uh, starting to fill it nicely. A lot of that is going to obviously just be it uh, filling up with water, um, but it is actually uh, growing a little bit here, uh, which is kind of nice. You can see it's a little tighter there, and you can see it's much more swollen here. 
Uh, because this experiment was only run for a short time, there's actually no new heads growing yet. But uh, and this is the this is a piece of rock that's in the tank, uh, just showing you how uh, the rest of it's doing as well. Because uh, well, there's no real algae growth. I mean, I do have uh, some cleaner crew in here. There's uh, sand sifting starfish there, and there's hermits and snails and such. And the only cleaning I'm doing so far is all I'm doing is cleaning the front glass so I can photograph. Uh, the rest of it is just uh, as it is uh, as it grows. I'm not doing any maintenance whatsoever on this. No water changes, just topping up the water and uh, feeding the few fish that are in the system initially. And then as I do more quarantining, which unfortunately has to happen because, I mean, this is, uh, I do this commercially, so I can't go without quarantining stuff for very long. It was at this point I decided that uh, it was working out well enough that I should add other corals. Um, this is a Duncan's on the right, and you can see in the back it's a sun coral, I think. Unfortunately, I'm not sure because it's just a piece that broke off a tank that I maintain and then it's been in there for, um, I don't know how long, a long time. So uh, I figured we should try it. Uh, well, the Duncan's is a, just a soft coral and uh, the sun coral there is hard, a small polyp. And what I want to do here is I'm going to show you as the weeks go by. Uh, as you can tell, the light's gotten more intense. Uh, this is because I've added a second strip of uh, the 10K. And we're going to just see how things go. And what I've done now is, because uh, I want to see, um, show you how they're fluorescing. Uh, that's a good indicator for how healthy they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, both shots. Uh, just UV here, as you can see. And then what I'll do is I'll turn on the 10K. As I said, the two strips. And then you can see what it looks like in uh, full light. Now this is, uh, I know at this point also I realized that uh, everything was beginning to grow quite well. I was quite happy with it all. So what I had to do is I started uh, gluing things in place. And if you notice, the Duncans, all I did is I uh, wedged up two rocks against uh, its initial clip. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to spread onto uh, uh, those two pieces of coral. And then uh, also in that far uh, shot, like this is getting close to, uh, actually this is almost exactly three months at this point. Uh, you can see this This is uh, very little algae growth. Everything is doing quite well. Um, I, you can see the uh, in the background there, the uh, sun coral has uh, split its head, so it's, uh, it's actually growing quite nicely. And again, all I'm doing is uh, topping up with uh, tap water and a hermit crab there. And I'm not feeding the corals at all. Actually, after this experiment is over, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to... Uh, doing some other experiments such as uh, feeding versus not feeding, seeing how that works out. And again, and this is just UV. And at this point, there's a lot more fish in the system. I think I have uh, 15 total now. Um, they're mostly being quarantined in the bottom tank. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, I can't go forever. Uh, I did test for nitrites to see if there was any bump in that. Um, and there wasn't, which is kind of cool. It's it not readable. Now this is by no means how I would recommend doing maintenance on an aquarium. Uh, if this was uh, one of my setups for a client, I would have done at least uh, probably either one complete water change by now or even maybe two depending upon the load on the tank. Uh, the 175 gallon reef uh, build that I'm doing, the other video series, uh, I'm going to be hooking up the uh, water exchange system on that shortly and you can uh, go over to that for actual real maintenance. Uh, this is just an experiment, and like I said, no one's going to build a sump this size with filtration like this. It's just uh, way too impractical, uh, but <laughs> that does have interesting results. Uh, this is another piece of coral I put in from another client's tank, one again that I've been maintaining for too long to remember what that actually is. It is actually the only piece of coral that uh, is not happy in this because uh, it's not getting enough light. I think what I'm going to do is, as this progresses, is I'm going to uh, put a try making a 10k spotlight to just focus light just on that one uh, piece of coral to see if that makes the difference. And again, I said this is going to be an ongoing kind of experiment. I'm going to try different uh, things. Uh, I've, <laughs> I've gone to too much effort to set this up. I'm going to milk it for all it's worth. Uh, and here we go. Speaking of the 175 gallon build, that's what that's going into. Uh, that's a nice long tentacle on enemy. It fluoresces really nicely under these lights, and it's doing quite well. Unfortunately, during its initial little uh, acclimation to the system, it did a tumbleweed impersonation and uh, rolled over uh, the sun coral and stung it to death. 
and uh, well actually I only really got one head but unfortunately because of that I uh, if it was time to draw this to a conclusion this is the back wall I haven't cleaned it at all and that's the, the algae that's grown in three months and this is the side uh, again same thing three months of growth and uh, I think from uh, just a curiosity perspective that this uh, couldn't have turned out much better than this now this is after it's decided to move positions the uh, an enemy and I think I'm gonna tilt the camera here in a second and you can see that one of the heads of the uh, Sun coral there is just uh, no longer out and unfortunately uh, like I said that's kind of kills uh, the growth experiment for this so what I'm gonna do here is gonna call this uh, to conclusion you can uh, make your own de uh, decisions on based on what you think uh, the lights look like, which is what this was originally intended for, and how well things are growing. And in future videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing uh, like a water change to see if uh, nutrients, uh, uh, a nutrient change or like, like trace element change in calcium levels, uh, make a change in how these are growing. That'll all happen once all the uh, bulk in the system has been removed, so that I can uh, just have more. Uh, control of what's going on so anyway if you like the style of video please uh, like and subscribe and what I'll do is uh, like I said there's gonna be a plant video coming up and uh, watch out for that and uh, I hope you enjoyed this thank you very much for watching